be YouTube famous? Ah, probably never. What I do know is that this is for if beauty and if I have done my editing job properly, uh, you should be watching me in black and white right now. Don't worry, Technicolor is coming. Think of it like The Wizard of Oz without the need to throw a house on someone to steal their shoes. Hmm. You will have seen from the thumbnail uh, the title and if you have read any of it uh, the description that this is episode 13 would you believe of the Three Continents, One Palette series, with, of course, the gorgeous Nona and the effervescent Laura. And this year, we're combining palettes. So we're starting off, as Nona started the series, with her two favourite colours, orange and purple. Orange, you glad? It's my pleasure. So, if you want to find out exactly how I chose to use these on my eyes today, what I witter on about, and of course, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor. Then, and my lovelies, you have the best seat in the house, as confirmed by Sammy the Slothstraw, who also advises that now, now is the time. Grab a drink, grab a snack, put your feet up, and enjoy, darlings. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, welcome back from the intro, which clearly I haven't filmed yet. I'm super excited, I've just finished another one of my Chrome Pebble eyelid primers, look at that. Use the last of it today, that means from tomorrow I got a brand new one to dip into. Look at that. Oh, can't wait. Right. <clears throat> Sorry. You will have seen from the intro that this is the continuation of the uh, Three Continents One palette, but we're doing Three Continents Two palettes uh, because we basically exhausted all the palettes that we had. So we thought we'd try mixing it up a little bit. And these were the first two palettes, number one and number two, that we did. So we thought, why not put them together, see what we come up with. I genuinely have no idea what I'm going to do yet. I am just sat down, just got enough daylight to film with, because um, it's been very overcast all morning. So I've been waiting impatiently and now here we are just gone half eleven finally got some decent daylight although I do have my LED lights behind the camera obviously uh, this remains a teaching channel as such uh, I go at a speed that you can keep up with partly because of my chronic pain but also because I want all of you to be able to keep up with my tutorials I also zoom in very close so it's just my eyes on screen. The reason I do this is twofold. One, if I'm in a lot of pain, hopefully you're not going to notice the grimaces that I pull. If it's just my eyes. Um, and two, if you watch me on a small phone screen, I want you to be able to see exactly what I'm doing. Um, it really bugs me when people say they're doing a tutorial and they zoom in, but you've still got all of their head and part of their decolletage on show, and I'm just like, 
Yeah, the channel's not really about teaching how to put the makeup on, then is it? It's because you want people to look at you. <laughs> hmm. Um, there are some channels that zoom closer in, so it's just their head on screen. But even so, if you're trying to see close up what's going on, for me, I think if it's just the eyes on screen, you're not distracted by anything else that's going on. It does mean when I'm looking down to clean a brush, change a brush, add more pigment, you are going to get a lovely shot of my widow's peak hairline. You're welcome. <laughs> It's basically a small trade-off so that you can still see what's happening. Um, I've got deep set eyes. A lot of people with deep set eyes think they have hooded lids because that's what they've been told. Um, I'm going to insert a clip in just a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds or whatever where I talk you through how to work out whether you have deep set or hooded lids and then I talk you around how to apply your makeup to get the best overall finish and the most longevity out of it. That is just my eyes on screen when that clip comes in. And when that clip is done, I'll be here at the other end of it to start applying some coloured pigments to my eyelids. So, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble Primer in Blank Page Cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black, then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight. And 
if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids but that have very similar issues. Hi my lovelies, I am back. Okay, I'm going to start off with the orange Ugalad palette. I'm not going to be going in with the glitters today. Uh, I'm going to start off with my Spectrum B06. It's basically just a round, medium-sized, fluffy brush. Um, I'm thinking of doing one eye orange and one eye purple. Or I might do a contrasting lid. I haven't decided yet. I'll see how I feel when I get to that point. Um, but I have got a couple of new liners that I bought just before Christmas from um, Glisten Cosmetics, UK indie brand. And they're split liners in Peach Melba and Grapevine. So orange and purple. Um, it does give me a chance to give these a bit of a run out as well. They're the water activated liners and if I do use them and apply them I'll use this artist's brush with a very 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 fine brush head to it. That's normally the one that I use. I have got um, some larger brushes as you can see but I like the accuracy that I get from this little one here. Uh, I just find that you can get a more finer brush if you get an artist's brush than if you use a makeup brush. Top tip of the day for you. Right, I am going to go into we're going to creamsicle to start with and as always I'm going to be doing the Viennese Waltz of Blending which is a natural turns towards the nose, a flicker when we get there and reverse turns to come back out again. The reason I do this, I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds, the skin on my eyelids moves. But I know teenagers that have always been slim that have a similar issue. And if you just rely on the windscreen wiper, that's when you can get your lid folding over and you get those telltale sort of barcoding or tiger striping effect. By doing the Viennese Waltz blend, you are very gently manipulating the lid around in both directions. So you don't get that telltale striping, but you're not causing any additional damage to the lid. Uh, I always hold the brush right at the end and if the handle's long enough I rest the end of it in the palm of my hand because that just helps give a little bit of stability to the other end. Right, I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow and I always start at the outside edge because if you do deposit too much pigment it's much easier to deal with it when your nose isn't in the way. Right, so, Nona and Laura, the ladies that I'm collabing with. Um, 
I'm pretty sure that all of you are more likely to know them than you are likely to know me. Uh, Nona is the lady who came up with this concept. She uh, put a thing up on Insta saying she wanted to do a series using the Colourpop monochrome palettes. Did anybody want to join her in that series? Um, both Laura and myself replied and went, yep, yeah, sounds good, we've got a few of those, why not? Um, part of the fun of, of doing this channel for me is the collabs that I do with other people. Um, it's, to be honest, the channel's been a bit of a godsend to me because of the, the people that I've met, you know? Um, and Nona and Laura are definitely, definitely Earth Angels, the pair of them. Um, Nona is just the kindest, sweetest woman I have ever known, really. She's, I've never heard her say a bad word about anybody. And uh, even when there's times when someone's saying, oh, I really don't like this look that I've done, I don't think it's working, Nona will find something positive to say about your look. Right, I'm just going to clean the brush on a clean washcloth. I don't use colour switches, they're far too damaging to your brushes, especially natural head. I mean, these are synthetic, but uh, yeah, uh, I don't use colour switches anymore. Right, I'm going to use the same brush and I am going to go into Sunkissed, which is a really bright, gorgeous colour. As you can see. And I'm going to run this along where my natural crease is and sort of blend it into this colour I've just done here. So yeah, Nona is just such a sweetheart, she really is. Um, she has a lot of different things that she does on her channel. She's got um, unboxings, she's made a lot of things like uh, makeup storage, makeup brush storage, etc. Uh, she does quite a few collabs. She used to be just into neutrals. But I'm really pleased to say that recently, since doing more collabs with people, she's become a lot more confident with colour. And you now see her playing with colours. And in fact, orange and purple are her two favourite colours, so I know she's going to be enjoying this month. Right, I'm just going to clean it. It feels so weird not to be doing the other eye at the same time, you know? Very strange. Right, clean that brush off, and now I'm going to go for a brush that's more oval than round, so it's, yeah, the ferrule is pinched slightly here, because I want to concentrate the colour through the crease, I don't want to cover up too much of this lovely bright orange that I just popped in. This is the A08 if you're wondering. And I'm going to go into a mixture of Mimosa Mami and you appeal me these two just to get a bit of brightness into that deeper colour and this is the point if you've moved your crease this is the colour that you put where you've moved your crease to because deeper colours recede back and lighter colours come forward. So this helps to confirm the illusion that that part of your eye is further back. And I'm just initially just doing the outer third of the mobile lid and the edge of the crease 
just to really soften that up. I'm also going to just lightly start, as I always do, just flicking the, the colour up towards the edge there. I do that because if I'm not going to wear a liner, by creating almost like a fake wing with the pigment, it gives the illusion of lifting the outside edge of the eye which gives a more youthful look. And then I'm going to do really, really tiny, tiny circles. Through the rest of my crease. Just to deepen it up a little bit. And Nona is based in America. So that's one of the continents. I think I am going to do one orange eye and one purple eye. I'm going to go a little bit avant-garde with it today. Why not? Uh, obviously when you put a shimmer on, I usually wet the brush after I've applied the shimmer because you should never ever put a pressed pigment with a wet brush because you will end up killing the pigment. I'm going to go for a nice flat sort of concealer brush I suppose. This is the A16 once I've applied the shimmer to it, I'll give it a bit of a squirt with this. I do that with all of them, partly because it helps to prevent a bit of fallout. Uh, but also because... It can emphasise any shimmer. Gosh, those shimmers are very similar, aren't they? That's Tangerine Dream. And that's Squeeze Me. Oh, Squeeze Me's got a little bit more of a orangey and Tangerine Dreams is more of a apricot. So I think for contrast I'll go for Tangerine Dreams. Um, yeah, it can, because I know a lot of people like to apply. I know a lot of people like to, sorry, a lot of people like to apply it with um, their fingers. But I don't like doing that because I've normally got nails on. I haven't today because I've just taken them off and haven't put the new set on yet. Um, but I don't like sticking my fingers into my palette repeatedly anyway. I much prefer using a brush. You can also get a more accurate line edging. But um, I mean you can use any liquid to moisten the brush with once you've applied the pigment to it. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. You can use setting spray, priming spray, finishing spray. You can even save a bottle and just fill it with fresh tap water every time you're going to do your makeup. Right, this ferrule is now wet, so I'm going to just tuck that into my knuckle and spin. So the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening the glue that holds the bristles otherwise you don't have a brush, you've got an expensive stick. I'm just going to pop this onto the mobile lid. Once this is done, and I move across to the other eye, I will start telling you about the lovely Laura.
forgotten quite how chunky this particular shimmer is. I'm just going to use the tip of the bristles just to smudge the edge there and blend it into that deeper shade. Yeah, I like that. Right, clean this brush off and get ready to play with the purples on the other eye. I love playing with colour. I love playing with makeup full stop. It's artistry for your face, isn't it? Right. That's the it's my pleasure. And I'm gonna start off by going into This one has actually only four mattes in it, so I think I will start off by going into Pretty Cruel, which is this sort of grey toned purple, and I'm going back in again with the B06 to start with. Now Laura. Laura is, she's my Queen Titania because whenever I hear her it just, it, it's how I would imagine Queen Titania would sound. Um, I realised one day when I was rereading um, A Midsummer Night's Dream that the voice I was hearing in my head for Titania's lines was Laura and lovely Laura is based in New Zealand there's your second continent obviously I'm based in Europe because geographically we're still part of Europe even if politically we're not don't get me started I get lots of people moaning when I talk about politics on here Right, uh, Laura, she is an artist as well as a makeup artist. Uh, in her films, her background, she has some gorgeous paintings and that's paintings that she has painted herself. Um, one of the first pick collabs that she and I did together was using a painting that she had painted as our inspiration which was so nerve-wracking for me because I'm like I'm going to be interpreting her painting with makeup I really hope that it's okay and she likes the look and I don't offend her or anything it worked out okay, she loved the look, which was marvellous um, but again, Laura she's very softly spoken um, very very, she, she's kind of, my granddad would have described her as a delicate hot house flower. Um, because she, she has such elegance in her manner, you know. And she too loves colour, which is just great, which is an artist, of course she does. Right, I'm going to go into fan fiction which is like a, a dusky pink. One thing I have noticed is that this palette kicks up an awful lot more than the orange one did. And yet, you know, same company, same format, or formula, you would assume. But there are still differences. Right, I'm going to use this fan fiction, just like I did over this side, so two blended and then one through the crease. 
but yeah, Laura just, I know she found it very difficult when New Zealand went into lockdown because they locked down hard being an island they could do. Why we didn't do that, I'd stop with the politics and we don't like it. Um, you know, they locked down really hard there to the point that New Zealand is now COVID free. I think it's about the only country on earth that is. Um, and obviously, as we are currently in our winter, she is in her summer. So it's it's great because it's kind of... It's diametrically opposite, isn't it? You know, we're all cold and... The majority of people do deeper colours when it's cold and, you know, more dull, not dull, but muted colours and tend to leave this sort of thing for the summer. I don't know, I just wear what I want all year round, but it's really interesting to see, you know, we're, we're here shivering and... <clears throat> And she's there in like little tank tops going, oh my god, it's so hot to die. <laughs> right, I've changed to the oval A08 and I'm going to dip into Sleeper, which is the deepest matte. Yeah, it's weird. In Orange You Glad, there's two shimmers and a glitter. And then like six mattes. In this one, there's four mats and five shimmers. Which is okay, but I know a lot of people need mats really when they're building and they're coming. I don't care, I'll stick a shimmer through the crease. Makeup rules? What makeup rules? Um, but I know a lot of people struggle sometimes if there are not a lot of matte options and this has literally got sort of a pastel a grey toned a pink and you know yes I would have liked to have seen a matte that shade and that shade maybe but It's interesting that this is a purple palette and yet the look that I'm getting from it today is almost berry toned. But it does go quite nicely with that. I'm not sure how well it's going to go with my liner though, that's the only problem. Oh well. But yes, yeah, so um, Laura, likewise, is always very supportive of people's looks that they do, and, you know, she's... I say this one a lot, but um, because I've worked in print in the past, I understand how colours work together and, you know, complementary colours opposing colours, etc. But one of the most difficult colours when you are doing makeup is yellow. So most people just tend to blend it either with an orange or with a brown. And I must admit I used to do orange, brown and green. That was that was the three colours that I'd blend with a yellow. But when the Aha uh -huh Honey palette came out Laura, as an artist, did a film showing how you could blend purples with it and other shades and I learned so much more from watching her do that. It was really fantastic and I just, I love the fact that she also teaches because that's, you know, it's something that I wanted to, to get across with my channel. Because, 
you know, when I first started really getting into makeup again, because I went through a phase where I didn't really wear a lot of makeup at all, what I did was always the same. Uh, it was a red lip and uh, either a white or um, a grey lid and that was pretty much it. I didn't really go in for coloured eyeshadow. So it was only once I started getting back into it again that I realised how few channels there actually are on YouTube that actually properly teach you the basics. They all seem to assume that you're going to know that you should use a beauty blender damp or you know don't put a wet brush into a pressed pigment or um, <clears throat> how to colour correct your under eyes you don't have to use as much concealer so it doesn't then settle in your fine lines and and that was another thing all of the what tutorials you could find were being given by 20 year olds they don't have a line on their face, and if they do, they Botox it out of existence. You know? So that's one of the reasons I wanted my channel to be there. Right, now, I've got these super deep creases here, as you can see. That's damage from when I was a kid, so I do have to stretch money down here, which is something I always tell you not to do. But I do it in such a way that I cause as little additional damage as possible. I just stretch the lid out far enough that it flattens the crease because if I don't do that what happens is the pigment builds up loosely in the crease rather than blending on and then throughout the day as it dries it crumbles into my eye and down my face and then once I'm done I gently put the lid back I don't just let it sling back and I don't put it right out up round behind my ear roll either. You can see there's a lot more movement to this lid than there was to this one. And I've gone for, I didn't tell you what shade I was using, did I? I was too busy whittling. Uh, I've gone for shade bare minimum to continue with the kind of berry tone that I seem to have given myself today and again just use the tip of the bristles to just blend it in on the edge there right I like that I probably am going to use my liners but because I'm aware these films are quite long anyway I'll do that off camera but I do have a little mini tutorial. I've got a folder or a playlist called mini tutorials. And if you have a look in there, you will find one which goes takes you through step by step on how to apply winged liner. So I'm going to pause you now. I'm going to chuck some base products on, do my wing liner, probably swear a lot because I haven't done wing liner for ages. And I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you. I've got quite a bit of time to deal with now. For you, however, it's going to be absolutely blooming instant. So I'll see you right after this bubbly bit. Oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Hello, I am back. As you can see, I did a dark purple wing outlined with a lilac on the orange eye with an orange brow and then a neon orange wing outlined with uh, the peach with a purple brow or berry toned brow this side told you I was going funky today didn't I right 
flat top brush. I'm going to go into the same colour that I used for my brow, which is Rise and Grind. Just run that along the lower lash line on the orange side. I know this is Will's favourite bit. And then again using the brow shade which was pretty cruel on this side. Like so. And then chunky brush, which is the A13 spectrum. I'm going to go into Kittenfish, which is the lilac matte, the only matte I've not used yet this side. And just use this. Very softly smudge out of the lower lash line. Come so. Clean the brush, she said, hey cupping. And then I'm going to go into Zested, which again is the lightest one. This side, and do exactly the same thing. Okay. If I had orange um, liner, I would line my waterline, but I've only got. I've got purple, teal, luminous green, white and silver. I don't think any of those are going to really work against these. And now this is a really cheap lip brush that I bought for me by donkeys years ago. This is the... I just love the packaging on this. Would you look at that? And you open it up and it looks like that. This is the Smashbox Hoodwitch Crystallised Highlighter in shade Optimistic. And I bought this because of Soraya, 90s love child. This is her fault entirely. I'm going to pop a little bit of that under the tail of my brows. Because apparently, along with everything else, gravity affects our brows, folks. Isn't that lovely? And then, in a corner, and just bring it along underneath. Dark to blend it in. You can just do the inner corner like that, you don't have to bring it along underneath, but I just think it finishes the eye shape off nicely. I might add a wee bit of the MAC and let it glow the uh, Christmas 20 highlight just on the inner corner there to give a little flash of extra oomph. Mm, I like that. Right, my lovely ones, I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm so distracted by that neon wing. Uh, I'm going to pause you one last time. I'm going to chuck some more of this 
on my face, choose a lippy, do something with the hair, <laughs> I'll be back. Once again, darlings, for you, it's going to be instant. Hey, my lovelies, I am back. My hair appears to be having a bit of a flat today, which is marvellous. Um, I used my Clarins Mascara Supra Volume in shade Intense Black. This was a gift from my friend Hedda. Uh, the lippy is Fenty, I can never remember, Unveil. I really like this, it's a really nice neutral brown. It's not warm, it's not cool, it's just, it works with everything really. And this is my final look with Orange You Glad. And it's my pleasure. What do you think? Probably not the kind of thing you'd wear to uh, do the weekly shop, but um, I would. But then I'm that I'm I'm 46. I don't give a toss what people think about me anymore. To be quite honest, the only time I get angry is when people use swear words that my godkids could read. You know. Anyway, this is the finished look. If you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are still unsubscribing people, but they are leaving my films in your feed, so it's not obvious you've been deleted. Um, it's also worth double checking, not just for my channel, but for all the channels you follow, whether your notifications are still set to all. Um, a few weeks ago, get on for a month ago now, YouTube seemed to stop sending emails out and when they did that all of my notifications got knocked back to personalised. So uh, should they ever pull their finger out and plug in the widget that starts sending emails again, you're going to need it to be set to all to get anything through. Um, I had to go through every channel that I've got them set for and change them all back, which was a interesting time shall we say um, once you've done that I would love to hear how you would have combined these two palettes would you have done like me one eye one side one eye the other or would you have done orange with a purple lid or purple with an orange lid just tell me how, how would you have chosen to combine those two palettes. I really would be interested to hear. Uh, once you have done that, I am of course going to need you to go across to the lovely Nona and the lovely Laura and check out their films as well. And obviously do all the good youtuber -y things like comment subscribe if you haven't already just show them the same kind of love that you always show me in my comment section because let's face it for our family is the nicest one on youtube most of the time we have the odd um errant member but then who doesn't Wouldn't be an interesting family if we were all the same, would it? Right, my lovelies. Um, if you are here from either Nona or Laura's channel, or you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome. I hope you enjoyed it here. Uh, I don't always do looks quite this wacky, but um, they are usually bright. I do have the occasional... Um, more neutral look, but uh, I like playing with colour. I had to do neutral all the time when I was working in offices, so uh, now I can play with colour. I am doing so. Uh, that being said, if you have enjoyed it, even if it's just my dulcet tones wittering on about nothing and everything, it would be lovely if you too would like to join the 4F family. Super easy to do. 
all you've got to do is hit that subscribe button, turn it from red to grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope that sometime soon YouTube will start sending emails again. Until that time, as well as a particularly large backside, I have an equally large back catalogue of films that you could watch. Uh, I've got all sorts. I've got obviously the preceding episodes of this Three Continents One palette, which I think we're still going to keep the same name even though we're now combining two. Um, I've got other collabs, I've got challenges, I've got tags. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So there's going to be something to interest you somewhere, I hope. So basically, as I have said now for what feels like forever, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy and indulge, my darlings. Because what better way is there to chill out and have a little bit of me time than to uh, lose yourself in YouTube just for an hour or so. Right, my lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you all stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.